Good morning, awake people of America. My name is Marcus Conti reporting. So the fake news, uh, New York Times is at it again. So sad, so sad. Uh, so can fake journalism, fake, uh, so, you know, there used to be a term uh, for this called yellow journalism, right? That's what yellow journalism, meaning that it wasn't, it wasn't pure. It was, it was, it was tainted. The New York Times has taken it a, uh, a step further. I almost busted out laughing, man. Check this shit out, right? It says, when you go to New York Times, right, it's pay for play, right? They don't, they won't give away their news anymore. And it says, uh, support independent journalism. <laughs> right? right? That's them. They're calling themselves independent journalism. So it's just a fucking bullshit. This this so bullshit. So what's what's going on here? So the headline: Trump wanted to order Justice Department to prosecute Comey and and Clinton. <laughs> uh, just we're digging up old graves now because they got nothing else. So let's talk about this. This is this is very important because it it shows just how jaded and just how. Um, in the pocket, the New York Times has become. You know, just just for a, a, a note, the the New York Times uh, a few years ago lost their building. Right, they couldn't pay their they couldn't pay their mortgage on the building, that big beautiful building they built on the on the uh, by Forty Second Street over there on the West Side, and they're 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 now renting <laughs> their own building. Right, so they're in the they they owe a lot of money to various people. So. They're no longer a legitimate <clears throat> form of media. But listen to this shit. This is, this is going to be a while. So <clears throat> buckle down for this one. So Washington, Washington, President Trump told the White House counsel in the spring that he wanted to order the Justice Department to prosecute two of his political adversaries, his 2016 challenger, Hillary Clinton, and former FBI director James Comey, according to two people familiar with the conversation. Right? So they're basing, first first things first, let's just break down the, the fake journalism. Right? First is they're basing the whole story on f two people familiar with the conversation. Right. They don't they don't name anybody. It's just just a fucking it could be the it could be, you know, two guys having a conversation on an elevator for all we know. Right. It's the same thing. Right. They also frame it. You got to look at the framing first, that they were political adversaries. Right. Clinton was an adversary, but James Comey was the director of the FBI. Why is he? Why is the FBI? Why is New York Times referring to Comey as an adversary? It's very revealing. The lawyer, Donald McGann, McGann rebuffed the president, saying that he had no authority to order a prosecution. Now, this is all hearsay. This is just a letter that, that allegedly somebody wrote. Let's watch how it develops. McGann said that while he could request an investigation, that Trump couldn't request an investigation, that too could prompt accusations of abuse of power. Right. Prompt accusations. It doesn't say that he can't do it. So. So ju just just to, to diffuse the whole thing, can the president of the United States, Donald Trump, request an investigation into corruption? Yes. Why? Because the State Department is under his jurisdiction. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Right? So. So McGahn had White House lawyers write a memo for Mr. Trump warning, they don't, they, notice they don't refer to him as President Trump. Mr. Trump warned that if he asked law enforcement to investigate his rivals, he could face a range of consequences, including possible impeachment, right? So he's, they're basically saying that he could face consequences from a corrupt Senate and House that's highly politicized. House and Senate is supposed to answer to the people, right? Not the fucking, not themselves, each other, right? The encounter was one of the most blatant examples yet of how Trump views the typically independent Justice Department as a tool to be wielded against his political enemies. Stop right there. 
it's see the way they say typically independent justice department. No, the Justice Department falls under the jurisdiction of the executive branch. So this is where where the the fake news and the the oligarchy and the monopoly and the ruling class they want to eviscerate the the constitution of the United States of America where there is no separations of power this is very important stuff right? this is civics 101 right the new york times is is trying to 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 set a, a, a separate set of rules so just let's let's continue trump views the typically independent justice department as a tool to be wielded against his political enemies. It took an additional significance in recent weeks when McGahn left the White House and Mr. Trump appointed a relatively inexperienced political loyalist, Matthew Whittaker, as the acting attorney general. You see how they, they're, they're trying to frame, because now, now Whittaker, Whittaker has been on the record as saying that, that Clinton and... Clinton certainly should have been uh, uh, indicted on uh, mishandling of classified information. So now he's a political loyalist, right? He's not a lawyer anymore. Now he's just a now he's just a stooge for Trump. That's how they frame it, right? So so is let's just look. I had to go to the White House fucking website, right, and read this shit, right? And you can go there too. Go to the White House, you know, and it, it, the White House has a a. Uh, a, uh, a website and it tells you what the what the separations of power are and I think we need to re-educate America I think that's really what's going on right here excuse me right that people don't know what what you know they're listening to this fake news bullshit and uh, they, don't, they don't know what's right or wrong anymore so according to the White House website the president is responsible for implementing and enforcing the laws written by Congress and to that end appoints the heads of federal agencies, including the cabinet. Right? So, so executive branch, you remember, you remember uh, uh, Alessandria Ocasio-Cortez, she told you that there was three branches of government, the president, house, and senate. Right? Right? But, the, but she, she left out the jurisdictional, jurisdictional. But there is no president branch to, Branch is the executive branch, and under that branch is the cabinets, right? One of which happens to be the Department of Justice, the J DOJ, where Sessions was the head of, and and Trump fired him, and now you got Whittaker, right? Who the Times is trying to to frame as a political loyalist, right? So listen to what the Department of Justice is supposed to do. The mission, and I'll get back to the article, the mission of the Department of Justice is to enforce the law and defend the interests of the United States of America according to the law, to ensure public safety against threats foreign and domestic, to provide federal leadership in preventing and controlling crime, to seek just punishment for those guilty of unlawful behavior, ah. and to ensure fair and impartial administration of justice for all Americans. The DOJ is comprised of 40 component organizations, including drug enforcement agencies, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, federal prisons, attorney general. The attorney general is the head of the DOJ and chief law enforcement officer of the government. All right, so, so, did, so just back to the first line, and then I want to play something. And then, uh, all right, all right, so is Trump allowed to request an investigation into the to to what we now know as the the uh, department of justice right for potential crime yes so did comey and did comey hide crimes for clinton you remember remember you remember that what was the whole deal so let's listen to something remember this now let me tell you what we in found. their own words i love it when we have Although it in the we own. did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. Let's get a lot of play for example, seven email chains concern matters that were classified at the top secret special access program at the time they were sent and received. Those chains involve Secretary Clinton both sending emails about those matters and receiving emails about those same matters. 
There is evidence to support a conclusion that any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in the position of those with whom she was corresponding about those matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. In addition to this highly sensitive information, we also found information that was properly classified as secret by the U.S. intelligence community at the time it was discussed on email. That is, excluding any later up-classified emails. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system, but their presence is especially concerning because all of these emails were housed on unclassified personal servers, not even supported by full-time security staff, like those found at agencies and departments of the United States government, or even with a commercial email service like Gmail. I think it's also important to say something about the marking of classified information. Only a very small number of the emails here containing classified information bore markings that indicated the presence of classified information. It's just evidence of crime. Even if information That's is all. not marked classified in an email, participants who know or should know that the subject matter is classified are still obligated to protect it. And while not the focus of our investigation, we also developed evidence that the security culture of the State Department in general and with respect to the use of unclassified systems in particular, was generally lacking in the kind of care for classified information that's found elsewhere in the U.S. government. With respect to potential computer intrusion by hostile actors, we did not find direct evidence that Secretary Clinton's personal email domain in its various configurations since 2009 was hacked successfully. But given the nature of the system and of the actors potentially involved, we assess we will be unlikely to see such direct evidence. We do assess that hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. We also assess that Secretary Clinton's use of a personal email domain was both known by a large number of people and readily apparent. She also used her personal email extensively while outside the United States, including sending and receiving work-related emails in the territory of sophisticated adversaries. Another minute or two. Given that combination of factors, we assess it is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal email account. So that's what we found. Finally, with respect to our recommendation to the Department of Justice, in our system, the prosecutors make the decisions about whether charges are appropriate based on evidence that the FBI helps collect. Although we don't normally make public our recommendations to the prosecutors, we frequently make recommendations and engage in productive conversations with prosecutors about what resolution may be appropriate, given the evidence. In this case, given the importance of the matter, I think unusual transparency is in order. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified evidence. information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. All right, so that's that's Comey in his own words, right? That's that's back in um, 2016, leading into the 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 election, right? That was that was like a couple of a couple of weeks before the presidential election. But but what he's saying basically is he he spells out crimes committed by Clinton, right, in terms of the email, the, the email, uh, the handling of classified top secret information. And why did they do it? We know why they did it, because they were taking money in the uh, quid pro quo at the Clinton Foundation, and, and they set up a private server to circumvent, uh, circumvent the government uh, paper trail, basically. Right? So... So that's so that there are the crimes. Are they is Trump allowed to investigate or suggest an investigation for for obvious criminal activity and a cover up? Yeah, yeah fucking yeah. What do we he's the president? Yeah, of course he is. So did he do anything wrong? No, he didn't do anything wrong. Right. Didn't do anything wrong. So let's continue with the fake New York Times spin. Right? It is unclear whether Trump read McGain's memo or whether he pursued the prosecutions further. So, now they're saying, now as you go down the list, right, two people familiar with the story said it. 
and nobody and there's no names. And now they're saying it's unclear if Trump even read the memo, let alone did the guy write it, or whether he pursued the prosecutions further. But the president has continued to privately discuss the matter including the possible appointment of a second special counsel to investigator for Clinton and Comey, according to two people who have spoken to Trump about the issue. Never, there are no names. There's no names. He also, but this is the, this is the New York Times, the, the, the fucking, you know, the, 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 peop, the place that people look for news, right, is bought and paid for by the, corrupt Democratic Party at this point or the opposition party whatever it is right now I don't even know what it is anymore he has also repeatedly expressed disappointment in the FBI director Christopher Wray for failing to more aggressively investigate Clinton calling him weak (laughs) one of the people said (laughs) there's no there's no there's nothing here this is just a fake this is fake news that's what this is this is fake news based on on fake leaks and hearsay. Right. A White House spokesman declined to comment. A spokesman for the FBI declined to comment on the president's criticism of Ray, whom he appointed last year after firing <laughs> Comey. Mr. McGowan will not comment. This is now this is the lawyer, right? Say, say Mr. McGowan will not comment on his illegal advice to the president said McGowan's lawyer. The lawyer has a lawyer. Right? William Brooke, Burke. Like any client, the president is entitled to confidentiality. Mr. McGowan would point out, though, that the president never, to his knowledge, ordered that anyone prosecute Hillary Clinton or James Comey. Right? So there you go. So the lawyer who they're saying said this the lawyer's lawyer is saying he never said it. <laughs> so there's no evidence at all that 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 Trump ordered the prosecution, right? Which he's he's technically not allowed to. He can't order it. It's not a it's just not a uh, a dictatorship. But he can suggest, right? He could recommend investigations into possible criminal activity as the president of the United States. Right. So there's nothing, there's nothing here, right? There's nothing here. What we do have is evidence of criminal activity where the then Secretary of State who decided to run for president was circumventing uh, uh, the, the law as the Secretary of State and put state secrets in jeopardy by traveling to hostile territories with unsecure stuff, unsecure equipment, right? That's what we have. And, 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 and the vast majority of the American people want to see something done about it because it was so obvious, right? Uh, so Trump's lawyers also privately asked the Justice Department last year to investigate Comey for mishandling sensitive government information. All right. <clears throat> What else? Mr. Trump repeatedly pressed Justice Department, this is all time spent, officials about the status of Clinton related investigations, including Whittaker when he was chief of staff, a chief chief of staff to Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Again, according to a person with direct knowledge of the conversation, CNN first reported those discussions. So, so one fake news is co-signing, the other fake news is bullshit. In this conversation with McGain, the president asked what stopped him from ordering the Justice Department to investigate Comey and Clinton. The two people familiar with the conversation said, right? He did, he did have the authority to ask the Justice Department to investigate, McGain said, Trump's attorney said but warned that making such a request could create a series of problems. So? So what? Problems. What problems? Problems of problems for the Senate and the House that are, are corrupt and money grabbing? So? That's called draining the swamp, right? That's what that's what Trump that's what the people want. They want these fuckers out of there. Right? The lawyer said out a, the lawyers laid out a series of consequences for Trump. 
For starters, Justice Department lawyers would refuse to allow Trump's order even before an investigation began. That's not true. Setting off another political firestorm. Again, not true. That's an, it's just not true. That's not how it would have panned out. That's purely a, a New York Times opinion. If charges were brought, judges could dismiss them. Yeah, they could. And they could not. They could allow the... It's all spin. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And Congress, they added, could investigate the president's role in a prosecution and begin impeachment proceedings. Yeah, they could. They could always, a, a corrupt House and a corrupt Senate could always begin impeachment proceedings. Under the direction of Nancy Pelosi, that's probably what they're going to do right now because they're corrupt and they're money grabbers, right? But here's the big line. Here's the big line. This is, if, if nothing else comes out of this report, it's this. Ultimately, the lawyers warned, Mr. Trump could be voted out of office if voters believe he had abused his power. Right? The voters do not believe that he abused his power. The, the voters believe that he's, he's enforcing his power. Don't you get it, America? Don't you see it? Like, Trump is, Trump is winning, Right? People want the corrupt, they want, to just if there's nothing else that's binding America right now, it's that they're tired of the corruption, right? And Trump represents, at least in part, getting rid of that corruption, right? And, and you see the fake news and the spin masters and the Washington Post and the CNNs and the New York Times spin it against them. They're spinning hard, trying to, trying to, trying to confuse you of what is the, what is the separations of power in this country? What does Trump have power over? The executive branch, right? Which is the executive branch, the president, underneath that is the, 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 um, the Justice Department. And, and one of the departments within the Justice Department is the FBI. So, so what you saw for the FBI to try to circumvent all that, why? Because they're taking the money. To circumvent all that all of those uh, chains of command is highly unusual, is highly irregular, and is highly suspect to criminal activity. That's why you investigate. Trump, Trump, Mr. Trump stoked his a a anonymity for Ms. Clinton during the campaign, suggesting during a presidential debate that he would prosecute her if he was elected president. If I win, I'm going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation, Trump said. Right? Okay, to look into, right? But he didn't even have to, he wouldn't even have to have gotten a special counsel. If you had a, a non-corrupted Congress and, and, and uh, House and Senate, you wouldn't have to worry about that. During the pre presidential race, Whittaker, former United States attorney, also said he would have indicted Clinton contradicting Comey's highly unusual public announcement that he would recommend the Justice Department not charge her over handling of classified information while Secretary of State, right? What, what I played, Comey, it's highly irregular to, to have, have ever done that. When the facts and evidence show a criminal violation has been committed, the individuals involved should not dictate whether the case is prosecuted. Whittaker wrote in an op-ed in 2016 July. So, so what's the what's the takeaway here, right? Let's just well, let me go back to the beginning. I know I went over on this, but this is this is important stuff, right? Fake news. That's my my headline. Fake news Times smears Trump for requiring Clinton Comey investigation, right? Saying that the president has no authority. It's a fake story, right? It's 100% fake propaganda that now the Times has written, and now you'll see CNN pile on top of it. The New York Times said it, and, then it, and you see how they pile on top of, um, uh, they, they pile f bullshit on top of bullshit, right? Trump wanted to order Justice Department to prosecute Comey and Clinton. False. It's a false statement. It's the headline, and it's false, right? As we've seen that McGowan, McGain, whatever, Mc, I almost wanted to say McCain, McGain, Trump's lawyer, said that that he that that was not through his attorney said that that was not the case whatsoever. That Trump simply suggested an investigation as he is 
entitled to do as the President of the United States. Marcus Conti reporting. I want to throw in an advertisement as well. So this is, um, I again, I, I need to plead for support. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, go, go stand on the soapbox too long. But if you want to support this channel, kindly make a, uh, think about a one-time PayPal, uh, 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 you know, donation and uh, subscription, whatever, or, or Patreon on a regular basis. The other way you can help this, if you don't, I understand, people don't have money in America anymore. That's the point of this, is trying to wake people up that you're getting robbed, right? But if, if you don't have, uh, if you can't support financially, I understand, but you can support in the sense that if you can take these links and tell people about it, right? Drop, make, it, make a pledge to drop uh, tell 10 different people on social media about this channel so that we can build a subscription and and in building the views as long as YouTube doesn't monetize a video which a lot of my videos are demonetized because they talk about things that are not uh, uh, mainstream popular so they, they they that's how they get you that's how they they screw you they don't delete the video but they, they demonetize the video but the point is that if you don't have financial the financial means to to help support this this message you can you can also support by dropping the links on other social media um, platforms and telling people so that the subscriptions the subscription builds and that the view counts build which if videos are monetized that does that does help that that's that is a, a form of support I'm also working on t-shirts and and um, and uh, uh, other merchandise from uh, with the latest artwork on it. So, thank you very much for your support. My name is Marcus Conti reporting.